Yes, hello guys, welcome to Mosdi Academy. So today we are looking into the chemistry mock UTME questions. So uh, we only be doing five or so questions in form of quizzes. So if you find them interesting, you can consider subscribing to this channel and also try to join some of our classes. That is our, the live classes where we train students on how to prepare for this exam. Now, as you can see, the nature of question we have here are not that difficult. They are just the live question from some of our students, or the way which we recall, and uh, we try to type them out and see where or those areas you need to focus on before the day of examination. For example, as you can see, this one says, the reagents that can be used to distinguish between the three classes of Arcanor is, and we have different reagents, but for confirmatory tests of Arcanor, I think uh, we use our uh, the Lucas reagent. So Lucas reagent basically is used and uh, let's see some explanation to that. Let's see now we can see now Lucas reagent. Now when we say Lucas reagent, basically Lucas reagent is uh, a mixture of uh, hydrochloric acid concentrated with uh, zinc chloride. So it is used to differentiate all the three types of uh, alkanol. It can differentiate primary from secondary and secondary also come from what tertiary. Failing solution cannot do that. In fact, failing solution is used to test for non-reducing sugar. Then the other one you have here, which is a Collins reagent, is also not going to work as Collins reagents are basically used in uh, testing for halogen. So guys, the correct answer to that question is uh, what you've seen which is Lucas reagent. We can prepare for the next question. Like I said, you want to be full part of this class. It is very, very simple. It is very, very easy. And to the question. Now, the next question is talking about uh, soda lime. Now, when we talk about soda lime, now in organic chemistry, soda lime is also an important reagent students need to know. I can see where UTM want to test students on chemistry this year. It's going to be very, very simple and also kind of technical if you don't know them very well. So, soda lime, during preparation of arcanes from soda lime, we say soda lime is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. Yeah, everybody knows. Now, arcane is prepared from soda lime mixed with uh, sodium ethanoate. Now, sodium ethanoate plus soda lime will give you methane, basically. Yes, you know that. But what is this soda lime? We say it contains two compounds with are mixed together, calcium oxide, which is called quick lime. On the other hand, you also have a, the other one that you also have sodium hydroxide. So the proportion of this soda lime is always in the ratio of uh, one to three. For example, 25 percent of sodium hydroxide, 75 percent of quick lime. So let's see the explanation why I go on telling you more things you need to know. Now, as you can see, soda lime from mixture is a composition of what. Uh, calcium oxide and sodium hydroxide in the ratio of 1 is to 3. So next time you see soda lime, that is that. In fact, you can write equation of reaction to explain these processes, but this is just a simple question which I don't expect anybody to miss. Please note that. In fact, when you write when you write the reaction between CaO plus NaOH, you are going to see that then you try to balance the equation. You are going to see that what they are going to be in the ratio of 1 is to 3. So that's that. Let's look into the third question. Now, the third question, let's focus on this third question. Now, as you can see the third question, the third question is testing us about uh, another important, important thing which is uh, more on physical chemistry. And when I say physical chemistry, we're talking about uh, questions testing us on uh, what they call uh, oxidizing agent. Now, the question says uh, which of the following is that it's not an oxidizing agent. Now, the key thing about this is for you to know one. The first thing is an oxidizing agent are uh, those compounds or elements that got this themselves reduced in a redox reaction. So simple, this is what is reduced as is uh, when there is a remover of what? Remover of oxygen or addition of hydrogen or decrease or let's say what? Increase decrease in oxidation state. So note that. So when there is a decrease in oxidation state, you said it has reduced. Where the other one would be for oxidation. So we don't need to waste our time. There we have a couple of options. Let's see. We have magnesium oxide. Is what is not 
and it's an oxidizing agent, it can be it can be oxidized. Carbon dioxide can act like an oxidizing agent. The other one is uh, ozone can act as it's a powerful oxidizing agent. Ozone is O3. So the correct answer should be sodium hydride. We can see the explanation. That's the correct answer to that. And looking at it, sodium hydride, which is written as a NaH, can easily combine with uh, you can dissolve it in water. When you dissolve it in water, you are gonna see NaOH plus what hydrogen. You can see from there, you can see that what it has been what NaH has been oxidized to NaOH, and hence the agent that acts in that way is called a reducing agent. So next time you come across NaH, think about it that dissolve in water to give you sodium hydroxide and hydrogen and hence NaH has act as a reducing agent. Every other option here are going to be an oxidizing agent. So in that sequence, I move to the fourth question. Let's check out the fourth question and uh, see what the fourth question is talking about. Now, in a similar manner, the fourth question is also on the same topic of redox. That means redox is also very important for students to what, actually watch out in the fourth coming exam. Because this is like what tells us what you need to know. You understand? This is a pre-exam. So you can use it to predict the main exam. Now, H2O2 is called hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide basically is more like SO2 that can act as both a reducing agent and as well as an oxidizing agent. Now, it is a reducing agent in the sense that it can react with potassium iodide. You know, our uh, potassium iodide, it will oxidize it it will reduce it, so definitely is an oxidizing agent. So it also reacts with oxidizing agent to make itself become a reducing agent. That's the reaction with KMnO4, for instance. Now, if you want the reaction of KMnO4 and stuff like that, you are going to get exactly what I'm talking about. So next time you are faced with this type of question, let's see explanation to that. The correct answer to this is what hydrogen peroxide can act as both oxidizing agent and it reduces it. For example, if you react with potassium iodide, iodide will be reduced to what? Will be reduced to iodine. And hence, it has acted as what? Oxidizing agent. Those agents that got reduced in the redox reaction are oxidizing agent. While on the other hand, those that get oxidized are called what? Reducing agent. Do you understand that? So if you react with KMnO4, you are going to see that what? It will what? It will actually oxidize it to manganese 4 oxide. And when you see it as oxidized, that means it has act as what a reducing agent. So it has that property because it reacts with both KMnO4 and potassium ion. So the correct answer will be nothing but choice C. And then now let me take the last one for this section. The last question I'm going to take for this section is going to be this question. You can see more, almost all the questions we're talking about are basically questions of uh, organic chemistry, from what I can see. So the question is. What is the IUPAC of uh, CH3O, CH2, CH2O, then CH3? Now, as you can see, the first thing you have to count when you want to do this is what? The longest carbon chain. That is all what teachers will tell you in your classroom. Now, once you know the longest carbon chain, uh, it is not necessary to be a straight chain, but this one already have a straight chain. Now, the next thing is what if there is a functional group? Yes, there is a functional group. When there is O between what? O, CH3. Whenever you see the word OCH3, that is called acoxy, which is also known as ETA. E T H E R. Now, to understand this, count the longest carbon chain. Now, let's see, computer, please show us uh, that. Let's count the longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four, as you can see. So, that is butane. Now, you know, boots, single bond is A N E. Then, we need to also focus on another thing, which I think is important. The next thing we need to also focus on is to check the acoxy group, that is OCH3. The first one is on the first carbon, and also the second one is on the third carbon. When it is between the first and second carbon, we take it as one. When it is between the third and the fourth, we take it as three. Please note that. That's also very important. So we can now say it is what? A and E, it is both. So one comma three, then we say di, because there are two. Di methoxy. How many, four, how many carbon atom? Four carbon atom is what? Butane. So correct answer to this is one comma three choice B. Dimethyl, dimethoxy, butane. So please note that COC, O in between carbon atom is called acoxy, also known as ETA. So if you find this interesting, you can join our live class to know more about all these things. It's just what I call a, a P naught. It's not that expensive, and I think it's going to help you ace your score. So see you soon. Don't, don't stop reading. Read wide and read wide. Bye for now. Thank you.